Buying tickets to sports and concerts can be complicated, but there is a better way to buy with SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to get tickets to every type of live event. And right now, get $20 off your first purchase. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter promo code WINGO today. That's Bob Dylan, by the way. How about that? Bob Dylan. So awesome. Awesome stuff. We're getting ready. Getting on, closer. Uh, on uh, uh, Freeform, they're showing all the Christmas movies yep. I've seen You know, from Elf. The Santa Claus, yep. you know, with Tim Allen. Home all Alone, Home Alone 2. Last night Christmas was... Christmas uh, Cranks, Four Christmases. Last night was Christmas Vacation. Oh, always good. One, one of the greats. Very good. Chevy Chase's rant when he gets the Jelly of the Month Club uh, instead of his bonus on his boss is one of, the, one of the greatest rants ever. Well, I would argue it's not even the greatest rant Chevy Chase has ever done in a vacation movie. Uh, the original rant... When the ant dies in the car, oh yeah, on the way to right, which right. we cannot play no, on the family cannot. show. No, we cannot. That that might be the greatest rant of all time. Uh huh. As we are Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN Two, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests join us on the Shell Penzoil Performance Line, and that rant has a special moment uh, to me because, as I told you, uh, I can't remember what day this week we were talking about vacations, but my vacations as a kid were getting in an unair conditioned car, right. driving from Connecticut. To go see relatives in Texas, oh. which you know, fun times. Yeah, uh, and and my Are we there yet? Yeah, and then my dad at some because I was in the back seat with my sister. We would have some epic fights. Sure. At one point, he just pulled over at the side of the road in St. Louis and said, "I'm done. You guys fight it out until you're tired." Right. About ten minutes later, you done? Yeah, we're done. Yeah, we're done. And we moved on. So I can understand yeah. the dad rant, yeah. having had to live through that when my dad just unloaded on us. Yeah, I'm okay? with you. Anybody who's been around long enough, got kids, take you, whether you were a kid in the road trip or the parent in the road trip, you've been through it. We're it's on a, a quest to see yeah. a moose. And we're going to have fun. We're going to have so much fun, we're you're going to be out of your... Fun at Wally World. What is the greatest rants of all time? Yeah. Kids, look it up on it YouTube. Is a very Chevy good Chase one. rant, uh, the original vacation if, movie. Uh, you don't mind me taking a moment here? I, I, would I like never to, mind uh, you taking a moment because that's less moments that I have to take. I would like to uh, uh, wish a happy birthday. Look at that. There you go. It would be my daughter Sydney's birthday. There you go. Sydney is 23 today. Wow. How wow. about that? I know. My youngest. Yeah. My youngest is 23. 23. She's doing a great job. She's working the social media for the Chicago Bears. So she's out in Chicago having a great time there. Everybody in the Bears treating her, her fantastic. And obviously, in Chicago is such a great stomping grounds for former Notre Dame uh, uh, students sure. and student athletes as well. So. All going well for her out there. So she's 23 years old today, and and I'm sure she'll use my credit card to buy an incredible gift for herself. As so she should. You uh, you go ahead. You have my permission today, Sydney, to go ahead and do that. Like she needs your permission. I know. Anyway. I got to like make she it. She isn't doing that I, anyway. I got to make it sound like I have control. You Sid, don't. happy birthday. I love you. I hope you have a great day. And by the way, quick side story on Sydney. I almost delivered her. Okay. Yeah. Do I want to know more? Well, I mean, really, we we people are uh, eating. <clears throat> Mike and Jake were both born. Were, were <laughs> uh, Chris did it. Chris, you know, um, for Mike had the epidural. For Jake, we got in the too late, so she had Jake natural. And but but she was never induced for any any of the, the kids. Well, Jake was born on Christmas. Jake's birthday is coming up on Christmas Day. Wow, he's a Christmas baby. Sydney's due date. I feel like as an NFL player, you messed up these birth dates. Well, Mike was in. I feel like you know, you know, you kind of messed up when the when the kids should be like the playoff stretch run here is when you seem to be having a lot of these kids. We, uh, Mike was born in September. Okay, so that worked that worked out pretty better. Good. Uh, Jake, December twenty uh, fifth on Christmas, and Sydney but to the story. Now. Sydney was due on Christmas, and we're like, no, can't can't have two Christmas babies. Yeah, can't do it. Yeah, so. We, Chris got induced. I was going to say we induced. We didn't do anything. She did. You're on the okay. oldest standard. Yeah, I was, I was again there for a, a short time, um, to, to make all this happen. So she was induced. So on the 21st, she was, uh, she was in labor and there was no doctor. No doctor. Doctor's not showing up. Doctor's not showing up. Nurse is there taking care of everything. No doctor showing up. No doc. Now we're, and for those out there who have kids and been down to the thing, we're crowning. We're getting there. You know what I mean? Oh. Getting close, we're the whole thing. Still no doctor. I mean, and I'm I'm a I'm a south of the border guy. Greeny and I used to do this all the time. He'd say north of the border. I'm a south of the border guy. You, so you're talking about catcher or umpire? Person. I'm down there watching. I'm oh. down there taking it all in. Right. Yeah. So I see 
she's on the way. Yeah. And the nurse walked out one more time into the hallway to see if the doctor was running down the hallway. And at that time, Sydney was trying to make a move. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. So all of a sudden, I'm like, there you go. I got the, the hands out. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm about to catch my daughter. Oh, no. And luckily, no. the nurse came back in, and she delivered Sydney. <gasps> I didn't have to, but I was there. I was ready, Trey. I'm sure you were. I was ready to deliver my daughter. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that that did not happen, just so you know, for a variety of reasons. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know what? Let's just move on and say happy birthday. Yeah. Use the credit card. Every single person in my family has texted me and said, Dad, you just gave Sydney permission to buy something she wants on my on your credit card. Yeah. Mike, oh boy, why did you do that? Chris, I don't know why you did that. I don't know either. I was in the giving mood. It's a holiday. Yeah, it's a holiday. All right. So congratulations. So, happy birthday, Sid. And uh, max yeah. out that card. No, I, I think no, the, uh, no. I think the credit limit is like 50 grand, so oh. go for it. Uh, here's what's trending besides that story. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lakers and the Rockets 14-game winning streak with a 122-116 victory in Houston. Kyle Kuzma, 38 points. Lakers 11-18 and 18 on the season, third in the Pacific Division. How about this? Did you hear the story? A semi-tractor-trailer uh, truck crashed into the pool of Portland Trailblazers guard Evan Turner. The driver's cab was submerged. He needed to be rescued by emergency responders. It happened when the truck driver lost control on a hairpin curve and wound up in the pool. So just the cab was. Can you imagine how big your pool was if the entire 18-wheeler was in that the pool? That would be a problem. be a big pool. I'm, I'm, That's I'm, unreal, though. I'm surprised that the pool was that close to a hairpin curve, quite frankly. That is true. I'd well, like they to were get really more, more logistics on where all that was. And today, by the way, is not only your daughter's birthday, mm-hmm. it is the winter solstice. The shortest day of the year. Ah, it is. And it's the first day of winter. Correct. That's yeah. what the winter solstice means. Oh, is that what it means? There you go. So I was being redundant. Uh, pretty much. Okay. The winter solstice is an astronomical event mm-hmm. when the Earth tilts to a position where the northern hemisphere is farthest away from the sun, causing mm-hmm. less light to reach that part of the planet. The solstice will eventually arrive at 1128 a.m. today. Right, man. I heard blah, blah, blah there. So that's whatever. exactly right. Yeah. So you just know it's the shortest day of the year. Shortest the day of the year, and maybe the longest day for me as far as I just gave Sydney permission to use my Correct. And this, Well, you'll find out in about 20 days when the bill comes yeah. due. Yeah. Okay, so uh, it's the shortest day of the year, and maybe one of the longest tenured head coaching uh, turns mm-hmm. may be coming to a close. Our Adam Schefter reported uh, on Countdown last Sunday that uh, Marvin Lewis will be exploring uh, other options after this season is done. Now, this came obviously out before they played uh, in Minnesota uh, over the weekend where right. they were thoroughly trounced by the Vikings. So when players had learned about it, like on the bus and stuff, on yes. social media, yes. and, and uh, they certainly ended up playing like they, they just heard their coach was leaving. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> obviously that was something that Marvin Lewis had to address, and this is what he had to say after the game. We're wasting time, that's all. And it affects people around you, which is unfortunate. And I understand that's what drives me. But people just throw things out. Suppose they throw things out on Monday night and everybody has to respond. And who everybody wants to be first. They don't really care if they're accurate necessarily, but they want to be first. Do you hope to be coaching somewhere in 2018? I Again, we'll see what happens. Okay, a couple of things to get to there. Look, I... You understand why Marvin Lewis has to say that. Without question. And, and we understand Marvin. I've known Marvin for a long time. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he turned around a Bengals organization that was, just so people understand, before Marvin got there, they were awful. The Bengals were the Browns. Yes. That's how bad they were. The Bengals were the Browns. Uh, they were the Bungles. They couldn't get anything right. He's gone there and turned them around. Now, they're going to miss the playoffs for a second straight year. Right. And, and, and he did take them to a new level, though, of yes. playoffs, unfortunately losing in the playoffs and yeah. never getting that win. But... He did raise the bar there. I think they went five straight years or six straight years at some point uh, during Marvin, Marvin's tenure. Obviously, they never got the win in the playoffs. Right. This is the problem. And Marvin has to say what he has to say there, and I understand that yes. and I respect that. But let me just say this about Adam Schefter. Before Adam became our NFL insider, he was an NFL insider for the NFL Network. Mm-hmm. And it was either 2006 or 2007. I can't remember which year it was, and I apologize but it was when the uh, Raiders, I think, were playing a game on Thanksgiving Day when there were three. You know, the, the 2006 was the first year they had three. Um, and right around Thanksgiving, Adam broke the story that, hey, the uh, the Raiders are going to fire Art Shell after the season. Well, after Adam put out that report, right. mm-hmm. um, Al Davis, the Raiders owner, put forth a letter, which was just scathing, wasn't a it? Scorched yeah. Earth policy. Against Adam Schefter, basically calling him, you know, 
a, a, a lap dog for the Denver Broncos and Mike Shannon because he worked for the Denver Post and covered the Broncos before he... The rumor monger, The right? rumor monger, yeah. all that kind of stuff, saying this is ridiculous. By the way, that came out 11 years ago to the to, today. 11 years ago today? To, to the day, Wow. Yes. Okay, yeah. so I'm glad we're doing this How now. About that, huh? Okay, I mean, this letter just basically said he doesn't know what he's talking about. Right. He's totally Broncos, Homer, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. I mean, just eviscerated at him. Uh, here's some of the letter. Adam Schefter has always been a false rumor monger with respect to the Raiders and anti-writer bias based on his relationship with Denver and Mike Shanahan. No decisions have been made relative to the 2007 Oakland Raiders, nor will they be made for some time. Adam Schefter could not have gotten his information from a reliable source because there's only one reliable source, and he doesn't trust Adam. So how did it all work out? After the season, they fired Archell. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so I get it, and I understand why you have to do that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna believe Adam here. I'm gonna oh, go oh, with Adam. I, here. I am as well. And it's, it, it's not shocking, is it? I mean, no. there have been times we thought Marvin Lewis was, gonna, whether it was his choice or not, the other choice is being fired. That we were surprised. Which really he sur- isn't a choice. He's, if you think exactly about it, right? He survived. It's someone else's choice. He survived some of these, some of these years. We, I thought he was going to be gone a couple of times, but he hangs on. And you can, and there is something to be said for continuity. Just ask the Pittsburgh Steelers and the amount of coaches they had and the success they've had. And and it just never got over the hump for the Cincinnati Bengals. And I and I know Marty Schottenheimer was one of them, but there have been other coaches that have said it. Once you get past that ten year time with a team sometimes if you don't start to reach a certain level everything becomes white noise right you know and and then you're going to need to have a change and marvin's certainly been there longer obviously than those 10 years yeah. uh so you know maybe maybe it's just time for a change on both sides and again they made the playoffs five straight years 2011 to 2015 they also made it in 2005 and 2009 so it, marvin is a is an interesting case study again assuming uh, that what Adam reported is correct, and for the premises of this conversation, we're going to go yeah, with that. Yeah. How do you look at Marvin's tenure as the head coach? Well, of the well again, if you're fair about it, you look and you say he raised the level of the Cincinnati Bengals because of what they were when he took them over. He got them to a level, but he couldn't get past it, right? right? Some good teams, some bad teams, some all pretty good teams that you thought potentially could go farther than they did, uh, but, uh, uh, but, but they didn't. So I, I think that's kind of, he's a guy that took you to a certain point, had some pretty good teams at times, but couldn't get you past that point. So at some point you give that a chance, you give that a chance. And they certainly did. You yep. can't say there wasn't enough of a chance going on here, but if this is coming from Marvin where he wants to make the move out, then just like a team at one point could make the decision, you know what? We need to try something else. I guess at times there are individuals. In this case, if it's Marvin Lewis's decision to say, you know what? It's, it hasn't worked here. You know, I, I, we need a change. Something needs to be, it needs to get shake, shaken up a little bit, maybe with me as well. And I need to go somewhere else and kind of take a breath somewhere else. Yeah. And, you know, some of those losses, I think, in the playoffs were certainly not his fault. Uh, the first one in 2005, when the Steelers came in, that was when Kimo von oh, yeah. Ohoffen came in and, and took Carson Palmer, Carson right? Palmer's knee. Yeah. By the way, on that play where Parma went out into 2005, uh, uh, I think it was a wild card round. Um, it had to be because the Steelers were playing. It was a wild card round. So they would have been the three seed, the Bengals that year. Uh, he completed the longest pass play in postseason, in Bengals postseason history to, to Chad Ocho Cinco. Yeah. At that point, Chad Johnson. And then that was it. And then and that was, was it. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, there was the amazing wild card game a couple of years ago in the 2015 postseason where it looked like for all the world that the Bengals were going to beat the Steelers in one of the nastiest, mm-hmm. most physical playoff games of all time, and then Vontez Burpick lost his mind, right? Uh, and that led to the uh, the go ahead score for the for the Steelers to find a way to win that one. So, you know, Marvin's an interesting case study in the fact that he absolutely changed the culture and has changed the culture of the Cincinnati Bengals. But how many coaches go fifteen years without winning a playoff game? Yeah, yeah. they've lost eight straight. Uh, their last playoff win was uh, 1990. You you rarely get that amount of time. Bo Jackson was yeah. the running back for the Raiders the last time they you won. You rarely a game. get that amount of time, and I don't see that happening again to get that amount of, amount of time without winning a playoff game. But we'll see. We'll see what's next. If Marvin is going to be gone, where he's going to go? Head coach somewhere else? Yep. Back to a D coordinator somewhere? Take a year off? You know, and kind of. By the way, nothing chill. wrong with that. No, I mean, plenty of guys have done it. And then jump back in. I don't know how old he is, how old Marvin Lewis is. I think he, uh, I think he's close to Herm's age, uh, cause they're, they're Herm's what, 63? 63. Yeah. But okay. really, Herm is 32. With, it's exactly with his right. boundless energy. Yeah, that's exactly right. And how much right. he works out. So I think they're contemporaries. He's 59. 59. 59 years old. Okay. So 
So we'll see. We'll see what happens. But, uh, you know, we had thought there'd be, I, I thought there'd be a change there a couple of times over the last five, six years, but, uh, no go. Looks like it'll happen now, though. All right. We'll see what happens mm-hmm. going forward again. Two weeks left in the season, and then it, it'll all come out in the wash. What happens with Marvin Lewis and the Cincinnati Bengals? We are Golik and Wingo on ESPN Radio and ESPN2, presented by Progressive Insurance. All phone guests will join us via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. So that's what's going to happen after the season. Something rather significant will happen this Sunday. And it won't determine anything, but it may determine something that hasn't happened in a long time. Uh, the Patriots will be at home at Foxborough taking on the Buffalo Bills. Mm-hmm. It was just 18 days ago in Week 13 where the Patriots went into Orchard Park uh, and won that game against the Buffalo Bills. I think the final score was 23-6. to But what most people remember for that game is not the final score or the fact that the Patriots won. Right. It was what happened late in the fourth quarter after Tredavious White intercepted a pass of Tom Brady that was intended for Rob Gronkowski, and Gronk's frustrations sort of bubbled over, and as Tredavious White was lying out of bounds, and the play was over, and he'd already been touched down, just literally did a a flying elbow to the back of his right. head that left Tredavious White with a concussion, for which uh, the, uh, the Gronk got a one-game suspension. He missed that Monday night game. Now... A lot, there was a lot of talk. We had Ryan Clark in the studio right. after it saying, hey, mm-hmm. man, they want to get their hands on Gronk. They want to try him again. Sure. They were very upset after the fact. But keep in mind, the Bills right now, as the playoff picture sits in the AFC, are the sixth seed in the postseason. They are. They have the same record as the Ravens, but they have a better strength of victory uh, than the Ravens. So that would give them the, the, the tie over them. Uh, but just so people understand, the, the Bills have the longest not only active playoff drought in the NFL, they have the longest active playoff drought in the four major professional sports, mm-hmm. baseball, basketball, hockey, and football. So you have to make sure, if you're the Bills, as much as you were upset about what happened to Dredavious White, that's not what's at stake here. Right, right. That you have an actual chance. And by the way, in that game, yes, it was 23-6, to I think was the final 20, score. It was 23-3. to 23-3 was yep. the final score. Um, the Bills' defense actually played pretty well in that game. The offense got nothing going right. for them. In fact, on the first drive of the game... If I'm not mistaken, for Buffalo, they were driving down with a chance to score a touchdown. They were inside the red zone, maybe inside the 10-yard line, if I'm not mistaken. And Tyrod Taylor threw a goal line interception, yeah. and that really seemed to take the steam out of everything. Um, focus on the macro and not well, the micro here. You have a chance to do something that, look, the, the Patriots may not own the Bills, but they're leasing with an option to buy from Terry Pagula well, how much they've dominated this I, I, team. I get that, but it's also a person who's in a position to get hit a lot when he catches a ball. So you can still you can still go ahead and rope him, if, uh, depending on what you're, what you're trying to do. Illegally, right. I, I don't know when you say get hands on you, you try and, you're not talking, are you talking about cheaping the guy? I mean, he certainly did that to one of your players. I get it. So you're talking about getting him in a pile. You're talking about, you know, something else. Uh, that you do with him, I don't know. But to your point, you're right. I mean, the main focus has to be winning. You know, yeah. you play New England and then you finish up at Miami and you hold a tie break right now over the other team in the Ravens, who has Indy and Cincinnati, two real winnable games for them, but you have the tiebreaker. So you want to take advantage of that. Yeah. Without question, that has to be the focus. But as I said, during the course of the game, it, it, it doesn't stop you from, you know, well, hot sauce, as Bart Scott once said. Certainly, started. certainly. And, and, you know, players players policing sometimes, you know. You want it to be legal. Let me tell you, even though what he did was completely illegal, completely uncalled for and dirty, you you you, you never want to say, we're going to go get this guy, we're going to go blow his knee out. We're no, going to take no, him no, out. You, no, you no. don't want to do anything like that. But if you can get him in the course of the game and you can you can get feel you get some retribution with a good shot on him, then you know what? Guys are gonna do that, man. It's a it's a brotherhood out there and look what you did to one of ours. We can only do something to one of ours. You can't, you know, especially in a rivalry as well. That that that's not gonna float. So but but to your point, you're right. They all have to understand what's on the line here. This is game fifteen. We are right now in the playoffs. We have to keep that as our main focus. Uh, and by the way, you are perfect to talk about this as you speak from experience. You knew some things about rivalry and bitter games during your days with the Eagles. You think? Yeah, a little bit, yeah, right? Yeah, just a little bit. A little bounty bowl. A little bit. With little the bit. Cowboys yeah. and yeah. all kinds of stuff there. You didn't like us back then, did you, being I, a Cowboy I, fan? Did I, you not like me? Did you not like me when I was a player? I, how do I say this politely? Yeah. You know, I was worried about Reggie and Jerome and, and Mike. Simmons, Clyde Simmons, Clyde Simmons, and Mike, and Mike Pitts. Pitts, and okay. Seth Joyner, right. and, and you know Eric Allen, and you Andre know what? Waters. It's a perfect situation for you to lie. 
Okay. You know, you're right. Could have lied. I was concerned about you. No, I was concerned. Oh, Didn't you have the interception against Aikman that one I day? I certainly did. There you go. Certainly did. There you go. Yeah. For for people that don't know, was it 89 the Bounty Bowl? Was it 88 or 89 the Bounty Bowl? I'm not sure I, I remember which year it was. I think but, it was 89 uh, when you went. They, they went at Jesse Small mm-hmm. was the linebacker, number 52. Yeah, that when went it's in Day House. Then Day House was a kicker for us. We yes. cut him yeah. and then ended up being signed for the Cowboys. And, and yeah, there was a, uh, uh, that was, yeah. He got tipped off before the yes, the day has to. He got tipped off before that. It that, was, that, that, it was, was, that was all rough. coming after him. And, and then I think that, uh, that was the game in Dallas. Was it the same year then they went to Philadelphia and, and everybody threw snowballs at, uh, at Jimmy, Jimmy Johnson? Johnson? Was it going off oh, the yeah. field? They, 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 listen, they threw snowballs at Santa, so Jimmy Johnson oh, yeah. wasn't going to be safe. That was, that was something yeah. else. And then we had you know, the, uh, the 11 sack game against him. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That was against that arguably, you know, that was the low point for that, that, you know, the, the NFL network did a great special on the great wall of Dallas, that right. offensive line. Right. It was from that eleven sack game where they finally said, "Hey, man, we we got to be better. We got to be yeah. better than this." And then they went on to win, you know, ninety two and ninety three Super Bowls. Yeah. So, and we yeah. didn't. So, yeah. you know, the whole last laugh, last laugh thing, yeah. worked pretty well. For you know them. why? That's when you laugh when you can. Yeah, I mean, you You're laugh. Right. You take them when yeah. you can You're because right. you never know what's coming around the corner. Mm-hmm. By the way, according to five thirty eight, the Bills have a thirty six percent chance to make the playoffs. Only a 28% chance, according to our football power index. After this game uh, against the Patriots, uh, they then travel to Miami to take on the Dolphins. And, you know, who knows what Jay Cutler you're going to see. Right. Are you going to see the one on Monday night that was just brilliant right. uh, against the Patriots or the one who was just the Waffle House guy serving them up uh, against the <laughs> Bills left and right uh, uh, this past weekend? So you never know. Okay. Should they win in Foxborough, though, their chances increase to 71%. Yes, they do. Coming up, reports of a new alternative to the one-and-done rule, but is it one that we really think can work? We'll explore that next. Golick and Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN2. Hey, everyone. Mike Golick here. Support for Mike and Mike podcast comes from our friends at Rocket Mortgage by Quicken Loans. Chances are you're confident when it comes to your work, your hobbies, your life. Rocket Mortgage gives you that same level of confidence when it comes to buying a home or refinancing your existing home loan. With Rocket Mortgage, you can apply simply and understand fully so you can mortgage confidently. To get started, go to rocketmortgage.com slash mics. Equal housing lender, licensed in all 50 states, nmlsconsumeraccess.org number 3030. I just saved hundreds of dollars by switching to GEICO. I'm so happy, I feel like I can fly. Disclaimer, you will not be able to fly by switching to GEICO. This is against the laws of physics and nature. If you find yourself flying, please seek professional and or medical help immediately. In the unlikely event you find yourself flying, you might be a superhero or a pigeon or a superhero named Pidgewoman who was bitten by a radioactive pigeon. If you are indeed Pidgewoman, GEICO retains all licensing publishing rights in the event Pidgewoman the movie becomes a top-grossing Hollywood blockbuster. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Golgan Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN Two. Uh, Cliff bringing out the stroke from Billy Squire. How about that? Eighty-one. I, your musical library knows no bounds. It my really friend. does. It's impressive. It is. It is quite strong to mostly strong. I just stop say. turning my mic off now. No, that's. I appreciate the love, but very, very. very you gotta learn how to turn your mic on. Still, you're getting more yeah. love from Trey. You ain't gonna get it from me. Turn your mic on. You are a professional. By the way, yeah. Uh, when I talked about Sydney and her birthday, and I said use my credit card to buy a, a, a gift, and and everybody in my family is horrified. I did that. I did text Sydney and say fifty dollar limit. Fifty bucks for twenty three. What, it's not 20, 21 is a big one. I mean, after 21, after 21, when's the next big one? When's the next one you really care about? The next one. No. The next one. Come on. 30? Yeah, probably. 30? Right. So 50 bucks is pretty well, good. By the way, Paul tweets in, he disagrees with you. He yep. says, do car dealerships take credit cards? Lamborghini, Aventender, Super Volce, LP, 750 Roadster, 540 grand. Hashtag you go, Sydney. Hey, Paul. Hashtag spend dad's money. Shut it, Paul. <laughs> You're banned. <laughs> banned for what? Tweeting? Yeah, pretty right. much. Good. Yeah. Good to know. Right. Mike Golick has banned yep. Paul You're banned. from tweeting. Paul, keep it up. Uh, all right, as we continue here on Golick and Wingo, um, well, you know, let's talk about LeVar Ball, <laughs> something that we, we said we're not going to do a lot of, but this is kind of interesting. LeVar Ball said yesterday he's launching a basketball league for nationally ranked players who have graduated from high school but don't want to go to college, saying his... Junior Basketball Association, fully funded by his big baller brand, plans to pay the lowest ranked player a salary of three thousand a month, and the best player ten thousand a month. Ball is looking for eighty players to fill ten teams that will seek to play at NBA arenas: Los Angeles, Dallas, Brooklyn, and Atlanta. Um, before we get to your thoughts on this, right? 
our college basketball analyst Myron Metcalf isn't really sold on LeVar's plan. I just think structure is so important for a lot of these kids who are going to be pros six to eight months from now, and their best opportunity to get that is something like an elite college can give them, that only an elite college can give them at this point. But I really want it to work. Let me say that. I want LeVar's League to work the same way I want the G League to invest and become a viable option for elite high school kids. Give these kids a way to make some money before they go to the NBA if you're not going to let them go out of high school. I am all for that. But right now, college is still the best option for all of these kids. Okay, so this is obviously right. in response to the one-and-done rule. Mm-hmm. And we had Adam Silver on the show right. when we launched four weeks ago talking about he's going to try and uh, look at and maybe change the uh, the one-and-done rule, talking with Michelle Roberts of the NBA Players Association. So the idea is good, but is this the right structure for it? Well, uh, first and foremost, let's remember the one-and-done rule is the NBA rule. It's not the NCA rule. It, it's Correct. not college. It's, it's the NBA. So when they talk about changing it, the, the, I think the – the butting of the head you're going to get is the NBA would like it to be two years and 20 years right. old, and the Players Association would like to be out of high school. Hey, if you're good enough to come out of high school and play, come out and play. You know, the issue had been when guys come out of high school and try and play and don't, then they're, you know, no eligibility to go to college, and then where do they go and what do they do? Um, for, for this, I, 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 first off, I, I, I don't know if this has ever been thought of before. I would imagine it, it, it has been. I, I, I I think this is, Mark Cuban had talked about, this is what they want to turn the G League into, partly. Because G League is international players as well. Right. Uh, and G League has a draft. And right now, G League players, they can be high school seniors. They have to be 18 for the G League, not 19 for the NBA. So right now, there are high school graduates can go to the G League. It's a, there's a draft for it. You, and you have to, you know, be, be part of the draft. But you can go to the G League where you're paid either 19500 or twenty six thousand uh, or twenty six thousand dollars for six months comes out to thirty two hundred a month or forty three hundred a month depending on what you make there let's look at Lavar's plan what he wants to do three thousand to to ten thousand right so take half take the middle of that is what sixty five hundred correct yes so average sixty five hundred for eighty players and do it a month so what does that come to six eighty four eighty five and five hundred and twenty be five hundred twenty, five hundred twenty thousand dollars a month. He'd be paying the players, and I don't know how many months this league would go. That's a lot of shoes. Uh, That's you a know, lot of big baller brand shoes so, to sell. So you got to do that. Then obviously coaches, training staffs, insurance, venues, the whole deal. Do I think this is where the G? I think this is where the G League wants to go. Let me just say flat out, a lot of people, you know, in me and saying LeVar is not coming on the show, don't think I like LeVar. I'm not a big fan of his, no doubt about it. I don't think LeVar can pull this off. I do not think LeVar can pull this off because at the end of the day, he'll get in his own way. So people can may say it's a good idea that can be vetted out, but I don't think he will be able to pull this off. That's just my opinion. Hate me for it, whatever you want, don't care. That's my opinion. Now, forgetting that, and let's talk about just the idea of this. If they don't change the one and done rule to let kids go uh, and play in a league where they are going to get paid, I- I'm I'm all for players out of high school getting having the option. Yes. I I don't think there should be a one and done. I think if they want to if they want to come out, the 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 one of the issues is as soon as you do that, your that's your life now. Okay, and if you don't make it. Now you have no college eligibility. Now you're out in the world. Okay. In college, at least what you have in college is if you don't, if you want to try and go to the pros, you can be evaluated. You can actually declare for the draft for the NBA draft. You can go to workouts. And then if you don't like where you stand, you can go back to college. So you always have a place to go. So in this league, in the G League, we know as long as you're good enough to be on a roster, you can be on a roster. In this league, that, there's there's still way too many unknowns. How long can you play in it? How how long can a player? Well, none, can, none of these things have been decided. No, no, no. That's yeah. the thing. Can you play in it for years where a kid can make some money, or do you only get that one year out? Do you get two years? I, so I I don't. There's a lot of unknowns with it. I I really think, and and I I don't want to put words in his mouth, but I believe Mark Cuban is very strong on making the G League something like this that would take. The and and again, right now you can, as a high school senior, be drafted to the G League. And let me tell you, there's no question. If 
Do you have a choice between the G League or this other league? You're going, why wouldn't you go to the G League? Well, th- th- that's that's okay? the question. Okay, th- there seems to be two separate issues here. One, uh, whether or not it's a good idea to, to do a one and done in college and the benefits right. you make get from that. The other right. side of this is, well, if if this idea is a good idea, why don't we just have the the NBA sort of make this the G League and, and sort of build it up a little more because. They have everything that we're questioning whether LeBall, LeVar Ball I, I, can pull together. I think that's what, I, that's what my point is. I yeah. think, according to Mark Cuban, that's the plan, is to turn this G League into something like this uh, and make this, because now, you know, the G League, they're affiliated with an NBA team. You have, you know, the, from a coaching staff to train. It's all, you know, by the NBA as opposed to a league made up of its own of, okay, where are you playing, who's coaching, who, what are, what are our medical staffs like? And that kind of thing, more the unknown. So I think this is where the G League wants to come into play. The idea of doing a whole separate league like this, again, for 80 players, is it something that eventually grows? I don't know. But you get paid in the G League. You can get paid up to $4,300 a month in the G League. So if you're making 10 grand, I know that's more. I understand if you want to give a guy 10 grand a month, that's more. Again, I don't know how many months it would be. And if you don't make it, where are you? Now, you could say the same thing about it, the G League. If, right. if a kid goes right out of high school to the G League and starts getting paid and doesn't make it, now he's in the same situation. It's not like he can't go to college. That eligibility is over. So he is, it, it's, it's a risk. There's no doubt about it. That's why I believe what we just heard in the soundbite that college still gives you a place to fall. That if you, you can get some experience and play and you won't get paid. Uh, you can get some experience to play, and if you think you can try and go to the NBA, if you don't think it's going to work, you can actually go back to the to the college and still say and still play there and have a place instead of having basically nothing if you don't make it that first or second year out of high school. All right, two things here. First and foremost, uh, do you hate the one and done? Yeah, I, I think if you know what, if you're good enough to come out of uh, out of high school, you should be able to go out of high school. Because okay, to me, I, I think to, to what a lot of the points you just said, I think the one and done is sort of a transition. Okay, now I don't know how you were at 17 or 18. I know I would have been nowhere near ready for the things they're talking about being a sort of a professional, right? Whatever, living on my own, doing all that stuff. So as much as it's an exposure to uh, you know coaches and NBA scouts. The one and done rule also eases a kid from being a kid into the world of being an adult. And I think there's a lot of benefits that can go from, even though you're not really a student, right? You are on, you're exposed to that environment, right? So I don't have a problem with the one and done for that rule. The other thing is, it just seems like everything we're talking about that LeVar Ball wants to do, the resources, and the structure is already set up in place somewhere else. Yeah. They just need to make that better. They right? need, they need to, they could make the G League this. Yeah. Uh, and, and then where that could help with, if you come out of high school, you're still in an NBA environment to take care of that young because 18 year olds have gone into the NBA, right. see LeBron and right. others. So they become professionals and they're in that environment. Not to say it's an easy transition. No. Uh, by any stretch of the imagination. And the other thing about college, quite honestly, you know, you go to college and they say some guys aren't for college. Okay. If you feel you're going to be a one and done, let's, can we be really honest here? You have to make it through one semester, not even two, because the NCAA tournament is in March. Right. You don't even have to basically finish that semester, you know, to be eligible. If you go on to the second year, you would have to be eligible. It's basically that first semester. Stay eligible and you're good. Because yeah. if you're one and done after if your team plays in a tournament, you're going on to the NBA anyway. Correct. So it's not all oh, college isn't for any for everyone. And I get it. That's exactly right. But when you look at it, if you're a one and done, it's basically one semester. Yeah, that, that transition sometimes from high school straight to a pro thing, unless you're LeBron James, the very rarest, or the Moses Malone's, I get it. it's difficult. Hey, I'm, we don't hear are, about the bad know, stories a lot, do we? There was a kid named Corleone yep. Young who tried to come out and never went anywhere, Ronnie Fields, those kind of stories. Yep. I remember a great Sports Illustrated article about Tracy McGrady who went straight from high school to the NBA and like living in Toronto. Yeah. You know, how to wash your clothes, yeah. how to buy groceries, all that stuff was, so you I know, quit growing up to do. a lot of quick things right. that are thrown in your face there. So we'll see what happens with this going forward. By the way, the one-and-done rule has been on uh, in place since the 2006 NBA draft. Coming up, the most annoying word of 2017. Whatever. <laughs> Plus, an NFL team is favored this weekend, but they probably wish they weren't. We'll try and figure that one out. Golik and Wingo, ESPN Radio, ESPN2. Blue Moon is brewed with Valencia orange peel and a touch of coriander. 
It's a creative twist on a Belgian-style wheat ale for a taste that shines brighter. Taste responsibly. Blue Moon Brewing Company, Golden, Colorado. Coming up next hour, 805 Eastern Stugatz uh, will join us from the Dan Levitard Show. Adam Schefter will join us in studio, 830 Eastern. And Carlos Boozer uh, will join us, talk NBA stuff, including what to make of Kyle Kuzma and how great he's been. Playing some ball, yeah. For the L.A. Lakers. And, and what are the concerns now with Chris Paul getting hurt again for the Houston Rockets? So all that's coming up. But, you know, uh, the Americans have voted the same word, the most annoying word, for the ninth year in a row. Nine years. Really? Consistency is important. Other words that are more annoying than this word for nine years? According to a Marist poll that came out Monday, the word you may want to avoid using at family or friends holiday gatherings is whatever. Whatever. Does that annoy you that much? No. Yeah, I don't, I don't see that one as being that annoying. I, I don't, I, I can't believe another, I, I would love, the, this is, go, at Golik and Wingo. What is your most annoying word? At Wingo's, at ESPN Golik. The most annoying word. Because the most annoying, for, to me, the phrase, you know what phrase I can't stand? It is what it is. Yeah. I hate that. Hate that. But this isn't phrase. This is a word. So most annoying word. There's got to be wait, wait. more annoying words than Stanzik whatever. Stanzik wants to weigh in here. Uh, what do you want? What do you got? Glass. What's your most annoying word? Most annoying word, most overused word in 2017. Wingo's use it twice today. Epic. That was an epic call by you. Good job. I don't Good have job. a problem with Epic. Yeah, that was that was a waste of 30 seconds of 10 seconds of our Good time. Good to hear from Stanzik, though. Every Appreciate now and then. It. Back we, to the glass. We like to hear uh, the Back pe- behind the glass. Behind the glass, except for yeah. Cliff. We don't want to hear from him. No, we want to hear from Cliff. Whatever. <laughs> Come well on. How well played was that? Nine years in a row, though? Yeah, that, I, that's ridiculous. You can't tell me there hasn't been. I, I'd like to see the li- Oh, okay. Anti-disestablishmentarianism is a, an annoying word. Fake new uh, fake news came comes in second. But that's not a word. Those that's are not two a words. word. So if it's if you're letting it be a phrase, and I'm saying it is what it is, but followed by no offense. Also, two words. Yep. I love so these are not words. Then literally, that that's a word. And then you know what I mean. That is five words. Come on. Well, is it a word or a phrase? It, it's, it, I'm starting to discount this in, in, entire thing. The entire thing. Yeah. Uh, look, I would like to know what I mean. This obviously has some reson- resonating with people because it's nine years in a row. But I would like to know what do you think the most annoying word is at Golik and Wingo? Yeah, let us know because I, 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 I I'm a little confused by that. I, I'm going to find. And plus, if again, if you're letting phrases come in, it is yeah. what it is. I, I can't stand. No, that, it is. What I, it I don't is like for that. You. Yeah, I, I don't no, get that. Uh, they also have the most popular passwords from 2017. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you think the most popular password was? One, two, three, four, five, six. That is correct. Yeah. What do you think second was? Maybe the word password? That is correct. Really? Yes. Okay. You're two for two. Do you have the list in front of you? No. Okay, you want to guess what number three is? If you can get three and four, I will bow to you. You have the list. <laughs> you jerk. Well, number three is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Number four is QWERTY. Isn't a QWERTY keyboard? Q-U-E-R-T-Y. Oh, is that what that? I had yeah. no, I looked at that. I have no clue, clue what that is. How do you not... How do you I not see. know what QWERTY is? How do I, how do I know Look what at QWERTY is? Look at Q-U-E-R-T-Y. Okay. So I don't any, 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 it's not Q-U, it's Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Q-W-E-R-T-Y. Yeah, I messed that up completely. You did. I, I, exactly I never right. even, And I took typing class in high school. See, now you've just... I did too, and people are like, what the hell is typing class? I know, I know. Word processing, yeah. maybe, all that kind of stuff. But yeah. you just you just put us in the, in, the, in the blue hair age category right there. I had no idea QWERTY. I had no clue. I do, I do love the fact that this made the list. The ninth most popular password? Football. 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 That is nice. That's good. Number 10 is I love you. There you go. Wh- I, I don't know what number seven is. Let me in. Oh, let me. Yeah. What did you, <laughs> did you think? Let my in? Let me in. Let, let me I'm like, what, what, is, what did you thought? Like, was some sort of fancy I, cheese? I have just Can I get idiot. a salad with let mine on some there, let please? Mine on the, uh, and on the side, please. Yeah. On the side. <laughs> I'd like let a, me I'd like a okay. gorgonzola it's... salad with the let mine dressing okay. on the side. Okay, I get please. that now that now it was explained. QWERTY oh. would be the one that I had had zero clue about. Uh, QWERTY. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, yeah, I, let me in that you let me in. I don't understand. Other ones, number, ni- number 99 was Yankees, number 94 was Rangers, number 78 was hockey. So we had our sports in there. 37 was did. Lakers. All right, stay with us. When we're coming back, a team is favored in football this weekend. They probably shouldn't be.